This is Sanji. He's a pirate and his likes include cooking, smoking, and anything female. His dislikes include swords, family gatherings, and the color green. Now the world government has valued Sanji at 330 million berries. This number is wrong. And today we're going to discover Sanji's true bounty. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today it is time to continue our true bounty series by rounding out the monster trio with Battle Chef Sanji. Probably one of the most shenaniganry filled of all of the straw hats containing a near perfect mixture of action, comedy, and drama. As a result though, Sanji's role in the series, well, it can get just a little bit muddled and it's no surprise that the world government aren't fully aware of his achievements and the direct threat he poses to their very existence. But before we give Sanji the credit he deserves, it's time to play a game of 69, a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. As we all know, Sanji has two rather curly eyebrows, which my wife actually hates for no adequately explained reason, but Sanji does have them nonetheless. So we are going to reveal Sanji's hidden eye eyebrow, and it is simply your job to guess whether that eyebrow will be shaped like a six or whether it will be shaped like a nine. And if you are incorrect, then your punishment will be subscribing to the Grand Line Review, which will also grant you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. Meanwhile, if you are correct, then Sanji will cook you a delightful meal. But here we go, make your choice now. Will Sanji's hidden eyebrow be a six or a nine? We shall reveal the answer in three, two, one, and it's a nine, which I suppose you could argue is an upside down six, but you'd be a weirdo if you did that. So if you pick six, then you know the thing to do, and please do comment below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet, I welcome you. To kick things off though, we should probably start by addressing the fact that Sanji is royalty. In this scenario, the world government would be well aware of that, as they are with everything, and it's arguable that they could issue a bounty on Sanji as a child simply to take him back into custody. It's a tricky thing though, because at this starting point, Sanji's father, Vin Smoke, a judge, obviously wants nothing to do with him, so I imagine that after consulting with the world government, they would just leave Sanji be for now. So we're going to skip to Sanji's introduction in the series being Baratie. Now very notably, Sanji is not a pirate at the start of the series. He is a working class chef boy, but by the end of the arc, he will have joined Luffy as a pirate, so we do need to consider his actions. The first transgression of which would probably be Sanji's defeat of Full Body, who back then was Lieutenant Full Body, and he was like an out of this world prick. However, he is still a Marine, and whether Sanji is a pirate or not, this is cause for alarm and well worth a bounty, even if it is a small bounty. As for exactly what number to place, it is difficult because oh, full body really isn't worth all that much as a, as a human being in general. However, we can look to other actions to generate this number. And quite specifically, I'm referring to Sanji versus Gein, which occurred when Don Krieg won up full body on the Dickery spectrum by attacking Baratier after being fed a delicious, delicious dinner. But Gein is a very useful man because he actually had an established bounty on his head, which was 12 million berries. So using him as a metric is a pretty solid idea. However, Sanji did, of course, lose to Gin in combat, which is one of the super rare moments in One Piece where a straw hat actually loses a major battle. And yes, fair enough, Sanji had the disadvantage of facing Gin right after Pearl, but Gin is still the superior party here. Also, here's the thing about Gin, actually, that 12 million on his head is not necessarily representative purely of his combat prowess, because Gin was also Don Krieg's armada commander. So he was also wildly threatening because he effectively commanded an entire fleet of pirates. And Sanji at this point simply does not equal Gin's threat in any aspect. So I'm thinking that we start Sanji off at one level below Gein's worth, sitting our chef at 10 million berries, which is not at all a bad start to the series. And it's surprisingly representative of his East Blue skills as well, because skipping to the Arlong arc, our next major Sanji related event would be his fight against Kurubi. And Kurubi also had a bounty, which is very helpful, although it was only nine million berries. So Sanji's worth from Baratie already trumps the threat represented by this fishman. Although what I will say is that Sanji's utter dominance of a nine million berry man might be caused to raise things just a little bit, especially since Kurubi is a fishman and naturally insanely powerful compared to humans. But given how easily Sanji manhandled him, I don't see why we wouldn't increase the bounty gap and send Sanji to equal Gein at 12 million. Not a stratospheric increase, but a representative one. Which interestingly enough, at this stage, Sanji's true bounty is actually higher than that of Zoro's true bounty. Because at this point in his video, he was sitting at 10 million berries after defeating Hachan. So I'm sure that Sanji is quite pleased with this scenario. But here is where Sanji, well, he takes a little break break from the series because after we enter the Grand Line, Sanji sort of slides into the background for quite a while, having very little of prominence to do until the Alabaster arc itself. Unlike Luffy and Zoro who continue to cause wave after wave of destruction wherever they set foot. The only things I can really think of that might be cause for a maybe bounty increase would be the defeat of the Unluckies on Little Garden, AKA Miss Friday and Mr. 13. And yeah, you know, they were an otter and a vulture, but they were still trained assassins. And also Sanji beat a banana wani on Alabaster. So yeah, 
Yeah. When you stop and think about it, Sanji's CV at this point mainly consists of animal abuse. And while we should probably stop and call the RSPCA, this is still not quite cause to raise Sanji's bounty. This does change though, because later in Alabaster, Sanji has his infamous battle against Bentham, AKA Bonclay, AKA Mr. Two. He has a lot of names, many of them fake. But Bonclay is another handy marker though, because we did learn that he had a bounty of 32 million berries, quite impressive really. Although it's hard to know how much of that was due to his association with Crocodile and Baroque Works. We actually learned of his bounty in the Operation Meet Baroque Works cover story, so it could very well be because of what he did on Alabasta, as well as his newfound association with the Straw Hats. But that's what we need to use, and so Sanji is going to go higher. Overcoming Bonclay's number to hit 50 million berries, which does also take into account infamy gained from just being a Straw Hat, given that his captain had just defeated a Warlord of the Sea, which is relevant because I mentioned this a lot in the Zoro video, but these association fees are quite important because they do add up, and they are established canon as well. They just didn't happen early on in the series because most of the Straw Hats flew completely under the radar with their actions. I mean, think about it. Sanji didn't even have his picture taken until after the time skip, so that shows you exactly how aware they were of Sanji and what he was accomplishing. And that answer is not very. And just as a quick check-in after Alabaster, Luffy's true bounty was 100 million, the same as in the series. Meanwhile, Zoro's was 80 million and Sanji sits at 50 million. So that does seem about right to me for this point in the story. We're going to fly past Jaya though, as we often do in these videos and head straight up into the sky. Because Skypiea is one of the great unknown events of the series to the world government and Sanji is worthy of note to some degree. I mean, he did technically beat Sartori and he survived a hell of a lot of damage with Anil. The problem is both of those things are very difficult to quantify, especially Sartori because Sanji wasn't alone for that fight. But I do think these events increase his threat level, especially after being part of a crew who brought down an almost literal god. So we shall reward him with a 10 million berry Skypea fee, thus bringing him up to 60 million berries. Heading back down to the Blue Sea, Long Ring Longland is an arc that usually gets skipped and this will be no exception. All you can really say is that Sanji defeated a bunch of schmucks with no bounties. So yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna move on. Water Seven is also a bit of a non-event for Sanji, although things become interesting once we enter the sea train, which is basically a Sanji mini arc featuring him slapping fools left and right and up and down. As for named people though, he defeats Jerry from CP6 as well as Wanzi from CP7 and both of those entire cypher pole cells actually. And this is getting a bit dangerous now because as much as both of them were, <laughs> they were kind of joke characters, this is Sanji absolutely dismantling an entire section of world government secret intelligence. And it's very threatening to know that this one man can just casually destroy two whole cells of cypher pole agents. And I actually think that's worthy of sending Sanji to 80 million, which is right around the canon Nico Robin number. Although her bounty was based on knowledge, whereas Sanji's is based on damage. That's not even the main event though, because on any slobby Sanji would, well, he, <laughs> he lost to Califa, that's the thing he did. But afterwards he would come back into form to take on and defeat Jabra, a fairly revered member of CP9 and a generally accepted superhuman by all standards. Now in the series, this is where Sanji's first canon bounty arrives and that number is 77 million berries. Very awkwardly, we've already surpassed that. So for Sanji to be considered more of a threat, which he is at this point, we need to raise that roof. And it's not quite as simple as just accounting for Jabra though, because any slobby was an event incident. Sanji was involved in the destruction of the island and an associate of the newfound globally infamous Monkey D. Luffy. And a minor increase of 20, 30, even 50 million berries just is not going to cover that. And I really do think that the only reasonable action to take in order to convey the danger that is Sanji is to just flat out double his bounty to 160 million berries, which there is precedent for because in the series, the world government just doubled Zoro's bounty after any slobby and Sanji has found himself in a very similar situation. But next up, we have Thriller Bark, very similar to Skypea in that the world knows nothing about what happened here due to a sneaky, sneaky world government cover up. But because we've now toppled another warlord, Sanji will acquire another helper's fee because he was integral to the process, defeating Absalom, taking on ores and all of the, uh, the other fun stuff. So that is going to be a flat fee of 50 million berries, taking Sanji's total to 210 million. And just to reiterate in this video, because I don't think I've actually said it here yet, the 50 million number is derived from the helper's fee given to the participants of the Dress Rose Rock. Basically everyone associated with Luffy got a lazy 50 million. And I think that's a reasonable thing to do here as well. After this point though, we can just jump to the time skip because Sanji, as with every other straw hat, would be separated during Sabadi and have no opportunity to gain new infamy for, uh, for quite some time. With that said, Sanji spends his two years with a very notable person being Emporio Ivankov, whose bounty we still don't know, but it was at least over hundred million. Not that that actually matters because the real issue here is that Ivankov is a high ranking member of the Revolutionary Army and Sanji associated with an organization designed purely to obliterate the world government is indeed further cause for concern. In addition to this, his two years of training 
have significantly boosted his everything to the point where he can now comfortably one-shot a pacifista, whereas in the past he would have just hurt his leg, like hurt it real bad. And to represent both of those aspects, I see the world government promptly crapping their pantaloons, hitting the panic switch, and doubling Sanji's worth to 420 million berries, which is a, <laughs> that's a simply perfect number for a smoker. Next up though, we are off to Fishman Island, another very overlooked location and the site of quite a grand event where the Straw Hats defeated a crew of over 100,000 pirates and made friends with an ancient weapon. Pretty damn threatening, and for Sanji, I value both those concepts at 50 million berries apiece, and so I will add those to Sanji, who will find himself at a 520 million berry bounty upon entering the new world. Then we have Punk Hazard, which is kind of a non-event because Sanji only has this brief skirmish against Virgo, and on Dress Rosa, Sanji vanishes halfway through. However, he still is an associate of all of the uh, Straw Hats, so he earns the association fee, as did everyone, which is our previously established 50 million berries. So Sanji, my man, you are now worth 570 million delicious berry things. Which, after skipping Zo, gets us to Whole Cake Island. In the series, Sanji's cannon bounty was raised from 177 million to 330 million here, which is a bit of an arbitrary number and mostly designed for him to one-up Zoro, but of course, we can't ignore Sanji's part in wrecking Big Mom's cake house. He doesn't have a fight per se, but he does show some comfortable handling of, say, Charlotte Oven, who, for example, has a bounty of 300 million berries. Oh, and on top of that, the cat is also out of the bag now. It's out of its its cat bag. And the public are now allowed to know that Sanji is a Vin Smoke, which is important because that will increase his threat as a technical member of the German Kingdom, who have now well and truly betrayed the world government. And combined with thoroughly, thoroughly pissing off an emperor, then feeding her, but mostly pissing her off, that is cause for at least a 200 million increase, leaving Sanji's final number for now at 770 million berries. And I think that's pretty all right. It puts him very much in the right sphere approaching the value of Kaido's calamities, but it also puts Sanji very comfortably within the price range of Big Mom's Sweet Commander, so I think it does work out quite well. Although Wano is almost certainly going to change things once more, so uh, we'll just have to wait and see. But for now, what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.